classwork assignment, which is somewhat unusual for us. But uh, if you've got a book, got a pen or a pencil, you'll be in good shape. All right, our lesson today will come from Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, last week, Jeremy uh, spoke from uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and we're actually going to begin in chapter 4, uh, in beginning in verse 25. So if you've got a quarter, you can turn back to lesson 8 if you've got your Bible, so you can uh, find it in Ephesians 4, verse 25. Because, you know, there's some passages in the Bible where the chapter break really doesn't do it justice, and I think this is one of those uh, examples where you can really just take out the, the chapter 5 break there and you can just go right through and it all reads uh, uh, just, just smoothly. Uh, but if you're looking for passages, and, and when I was, uh, first became a Christian, uh, I had this very same Bible here and I took it and I read through the New Testament uh, up in college and I was looking for passages it was just like uh, what we're going to be reading here from Ephesians 4 and 5 that were very instructive on how I should behave and how I should act. And right before I actually got up here, I had studied through the quarterly, so I hadn't really opened my Bible. But it was interesting because I still had all those same notes and markings that I had made then. So I had highlighted it at that time as being very important to me. And it is an important, if you're looking for just instructions on how a Christian should live. It's hard pressed to find a better passage in the Bible than, than some of these. But in chapter 8, we, we, the title of the lesson was Warnings, and it did have some warnings on how Christians should uh, abstain from certain things. And, and our uh, lesson in Lesson 9 is titled The Christian Walk, but it also includes several warnings, but it also adds some things that Christians should do. And uh, what I want to do... Uh, well, we'll get to that in just a second. But a great way for Christians to live is by an example. Uh, we should follow an example. And whose example should we all be striving to follow? Jesus. And, and Justin did an excellent uh, job today uh, talking about the word Christian and followers of Christ. Uh, and that's the ultimate example in which we should follow. Uh, but there's other examples. And as, as Paul was writing to the church here at Ephesus... Uh, he was a good example for them. Uh, everywhere he went, he tried and modeled to be a good example uh, for the Christians there. Uh, they were all young in the faith and, and needed someone to look up to. Uh, so he certainly tried to model what he, from Jesus, uh, but he also modeled Christian walk himself. And, and even in the church here today, uh, we've got good examples of people and individuals to, to look up to and model our behavior. Uh, so certainly the mature uh, Christian should serve to be a good example for everyone. Uh, and as they use Christ as their example, it should all kind of follow that way. Uh, but what we want to do, uh, if you've got your quarterly, Ephesians 4.25, imagine that you're speaking to a new convert or a child or someone who doesn't really know a lot about Christ, about how a Christian should live. And if you had this passage right here, and you sit down, and what I, I'm going to ask you to do is, is underline important, uh, I guess, commands or warnings that you're going to find, in, beginning in verse 25 of Ephesians 4. Uh, see, in, in my quarterly, I've underlined several. There's so much good material in here. And just underline, if you was going to walk through a, a new convert or something about how they should act, because you can find so much good information in here, so... Go through there and just take a minute or two and uh, underline some important things from Ephesians 4, 25 through 32 right here that you could just point out as being good information for a new convert to live his life as. Don't be lying. That's a good one. You don't, come, you don't have, make it very far into the passage without underlining something. Be angry and don't sin. That's good, too. It's okay to be angry from time to time, but that's not an excuse to, to sin. Speak truth. I got that one, too. It's not that we shouldn't just lie, but we should, um, and conversely, we should always be honest and speak truth. 
And as you're reading these, uh, imagine yourself being uh, maybe a, a member of the, the church at Ephesus. You've lived a life of sin. You've lived a life outside of Christ. And what Paul is preaching is, is quite different uh, than the way you live your life. And it, so these things seem simple to us sometimes because we've heard them so, so many times. But to them, they weren't necessarily that simple and that's something that commonplace. And to a lot of people today, these are principles that are not that commonplace in their lives. Steal no longer. Simple command for us, but it's clearly there. I thought Jeremy made a good point last week about that. You know, not don't just steal, but also work so you can give back to those who have who are in need. And that's the, the command at the end, right there, to give to those who are in need. I appreciate that more as it was pointed out to me last week. I, I pro- no. We all have a role and responsibility as Christians to give to those who are in need. Mm-hmm. You're going to find as we move over into chapter 5 that, that Paul spends a good amount of his time talking about what comes out of your mouth. Uh, there's so much in that, that that maybe we can overlook. It's being it can defile us and, and cause us to sin. And conversely, it's not letting corrupt words proceed out of your mouth. How should we speak? Uh, we should edify others. Uh, the words we say should be uplifting and building others up from time to time. And if you look in verse 31, uh, Paul explains some things that we're not supposed to do. And uh, the whole list of these things that would go under that. Uh, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So we certainly uh, should control our emotions and and not, I guess, become overtaken in, in those kinds of things. Exactly. And then that's a good time to, for us to move over into that chapter 5 reading right there. And, and I want you to do kind of some of the same things uh, as we walk through it. Uh, just tell there's a whole bunch of good stuff right here. So Christians are supposed to act a certain way. Our, the way we live our lives is, is by no accident. And I thought Justin did a good job of pointing out that those charts and those statistics that it said, I think 75% of the people claim to be Christians, but yet when he looked at 20%, uh, only 20% attended some kind of service. Uh, so maybe there's some confusions, in it, and it's easy for us really to get lost in the ways of the world too and not understand how a Christian should live his life. And if you ever, maybe it's good for us to always refocus on some of these good passages and, and maybe do some self-correction in our lives. But you see the first statement here in, in verse 2, walk in love. We're supposed to have a purposeful life. We're supposed to be going in a direction, and love is a good guide for that. Verse 3, you see uh, some warnings again. Like I said, and the title was or 4 was warnings, but you see several warnings within this. And these are things that as Christians we're supposed to abstain from and, and not do. Uh, fornication, all uncleanness, covetousness, uh, and not even be named among you as fitting for the saints. So that covetousness, that gets into greed. And we go back to 4 where it's telling us to work and give to those who are needy. And then we have the warning here. Of don't be too covetous. Don't don't be too greedy with what you have. Verse mm-hmm. 
That's an excellent one. That was one of the ones that I had underlined in my Bible many years ago. But, uh, that, that Don't be unwise, and we're going to get to that one here in just a few moments too. Uh, it is a responsibility of a Christian to study God's Word and to know what it says. Uh, and that's what worry is so worrisome about that statistic. That tells you that a lot of people just don't put up any effort to learn God's will. It's amazing that, I mean, not that Paul re emphasizes in verse 5 about uh, okay, no fornicator, unfading, 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 yeah, you can't overlook the emphasis, and he doesn't let one verse go in between that he has to restate that and the importance of that. Good point. So many people today don't want to have personal responsibility. Heaven is a place that's better at where there's a fire of faith. You've got to prepare yourself. There is a personal responsibility of a Christian. That's why Paul spent so much time here instructing these new converts. Uh, This is how you need to live. And uh, I'd read an article a, a few years ago that. The way, one of the reasons Christianity grew at the rate it did was that these people took these words to heart and they completely changed their selves so that they set apart their, their lives so much more from the typical world. And this world that, that Paul's writing to here is not really that different than the world we live in today. They were overcome in sin and these concepts that Paul was preaching to and talking about were very uncommon to these people. So when these people started to do these things and look after others and really go that extra mile in love, uh, other people stood up and took notice. And as a result, you saw Christianity grow at a rate that is probably never seen since that time. But, and I, I'd seen uh, several hundred years after Paul wrote this, uh, one of the Roman, I guess Caesars during that time, one of the final ones, had, had tried to shift the world to he, he wanted to just end Christianity. And uh, he, the, his advisors come and told him, you know, you really, we, we're having a hard time because the church here is taking care of everyone on the streets. There's no one who is left out that the church is not looking after and taking care of. Uh, so they really had a hard time turning the people around because uh, they were seeing the, the changes in these people's lives. And that, that still applies to us in the we should have a change in our lives when we become Christians. And hopefully the world can see that through us. Don't try. And I think just, just try. Um, we make a lot of mistakes in our life trying to do it our own way. Um, you can, and there's been a lot of people who look after ways of, you know, to be free or to be happy, and and that takes them down a road sometimes that, that is complete opposite of what that is free or if it's happy or if it, so. We do need to put up the effort to be a Christian, and it's not hard because God's given us some pretty good directions right here. Yeah, Revelations gives us a good idea of those people in which you don't want to be associated with, and that's the people you'll be with. Uh, Pretty 
pretty powerful. Yeah. I, I, that's a powerful point to, to really make us all think. Uh, and I think a lot of like, things like that begin and start at the local community level. And then we can grow from that point. But, you know, how easy, it's so easy for the government and, and several people, and there's always going to be people that speak ill of Christians. Uh, that, Yeah, it's a battle. That's an appropriate word to use. Yeah. Yeah. That is. And we still should. And, and no matter how hard the government pushes back, we should push back in love and, and to that extent that, that we can, can overtake and, and those who, who do want to fight us and, and demean us in those ways. But yeah. I mean, uh, I don't think God speaks about the government's necessarily supporting financially those who are in need. I mean, it speaks to us as Christians to be the ones to, to help those who are in need. As I was going through this lesson, I was reading these different uh, directives and things, and I, I really just pondered and, and thought of how different it was first for these people. Uh, a lot of these commandments, you got to keep in mind, they were pagans, they were idol worshippers. Uh, very little morality was directed to these people as far as how they were supposed to live their lives. Uh, they were to offer sacrifices to whatever deity or, or God they did, and we've studied in times past about the different ways in which they did that. You look at the church, the, the Corinthians, and how they worshiped their gods, and, and the different ways in which the sin had crept into their whole life. So they really, these things we've been taught our whole lives, they hadn't. Uh, so, you know, they could do kind of as they wanted to. Uh, that's good. And if you look in verses uh, 6 and 7, it kind of ma- mentions that again about don't be partakers with them and them being the sons of disobedience. So we certainly want to reach out to the world and convert as many as we can, but we have to be careful too at the same time as to not become overtaken with them that they would drag us down. Uh, but I got to thinking is what, where would we be without Christianity? If you just take a, a second to think about that concept, and y'all probably know some of the examples, but I was trying to think of civilizations and societies throughout history who really had not been exposed to Christ or these teachings. And a couple that kind of come up to me, and some of them had just flat out rejected Christ. Uh, you, but you look at the, uh, maybe the Soviet Union during their, their peak time, uh, they were really uh, a communist dictatorship with Stalin and and the atrocities in which he committed amongst his people, uh, you didn't see a lot of these things right here being very important to those kinds of people and, and things that did. Uh, if you look at the ancient Indian civilizations of uh, Central America, you know they often offered uh, human sacrifices and did things like that frequently to worship their gods. 
So you see, if you didn't have Christ, some of these kinds of principles and, and teachings possibly could still be going on. You look at some of the things in communist China that as well uh, is, a, is an area that's really not been strongly hit uh, by Christ through the ages. And there's a, a different way of living. That's exactly the point I want to get to. And, and if you look at that, is without Christ, without these teachings, we don't realize, I think, as a society, how much this has influenced our lives. Uh, I mean, we've got laws. We've got right and wrong. A good portion of that has been directly influenced by God and by Christ's teachings. So if you took that away, how do you know what's right or wrong? And I think we live in a world similar to the world that they lived in where it's really a moral relativism. And that basically means that morality fluctuates between whatever society says is appropriate at the time. And uh, in a lot of ways, we're, we're in, there's a big push for that, is that. But what I find right here in these scriptures still, ble- still is true to me today, just as true today as it was 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. So we can read through these things, and they apply to us the same way. It didn't change. Right and wrong didn't change from the church at Ephesus to us today. We always have to be careful that we don't try to change the scriptures, that we can read them openly and, and apply them to our lives. And this is, you're not going to find much easier to understand passages than what we have right here in Ephesians 5. Verse 15, uh, See them that walk circumspectfully, not as fools, but as wise. And this is, hits at what you mentioned, Barry, that uh, we're supposed to have a purposeful walk. Uh, you know, we're supposed to study the scriptures. We're supposed to know what we're to do, and we're supposed to model our lives after this passage. The t- that's a pretty good point. The, the more time you spend praying, is the less time you're going to spend sinning. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, and we all are very are tempted on different ways, and, and we do have to overcome those, and we, we do struggle from time to time. We know what to ask for. First off, we need to know what's sin and what's not.
have done that differently. Yeah, it, it seems like the, the bar sometimes is raising because as we grow as Christians, uh, we do learn different things in which we should be doing and, and behaving. Ignorance is not an excuse. I think it doesn't say that word for word here in this passage, but it does. It mentions that you can't be unwise. So we can't stick our heads in the ground and think I'm living the life I I should be living. Everything's going good. God's happy with me. Uh, If we're not doing a lot of what God's asked us to do, told us to do. Verse 17, therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Amen. So we do need to spend more time praying, more time studying God's will, and more time doing and following God's will. Probably fair to say people understood their Bibles a lot better than they understood their governments then. And maybe we're a little different now. All right, well, let's, let's close with a prayer and then we will be done. Thank you, dear Lord, for the wonderful day you've given us, the opportunity we've had to come together and study a portion of your will and pray that you guide us as we study your word and, and, and try to live our lives after it and just strengthen us as we go out into the world and that we can be a better light into those and be better Christians and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen.